as a day one necromancer, I believe I can suggest to you the easiest and fastest method in getting past a level 50 from a level 1 within season 1 for you necromancers out there to progress on and do your own thing within end game. Today's guide isn't necessarily a build, but it's things you want to be doing to level up quickest and making that game on a world tier 2 for you as super super easy as possible possible and then when you complete say capstone and progress onto a world tier 3 you are good to go on into that end game this will get you past a level 50 as quick as possible on a necromancer how's it going guys my name is dpj and if you do enjoy the video leaving a like it really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe so day one necromancer here done it all season one started i played rogue Enjoyed my time, but just had to create another Necromancer because I wanted to play around with the hearts introduced with Season 1 and see what was possible. What I've combined here on this Necromancer to get as quickly as possible to end game is utterly crazy and you could do this super super fast. Now I will state what you're seeing on screen now isn't anything special. The gear I'm wearing is probably guys the same gear i got when i was literally like a level 20 to 25 i haven't upgraded anything nothing here is leveled my gear has not been upgraded at all it's just standard crappy gear most of which doesn't even address things i need or help in any major way it's just a few codexes which i've applied which you can easily obtain from dungeons as well as a couple of hearts combine these guys and you'll be on your way to end game as fast as anyone so firstly, this as you can see is based around Bone Spear and with this comes extreme damage capabilities. And I will keep this simple for you because this isn't meant to be anything permanent. This is meant for leveling with that intention of possibly changing up once you're at the end game to try different things. It's just getting to end game as fast as possible. That's what this is all about. Okay, so we will first go over how I've got my skill tree currently set up and where you need to spend those points as you get them. So first up guys, you want to spend into Reap. One into Reap is more than enough because you just want to make your way across to Acolyte's Reap. This is important for this build in creating those corpses. Then guys, you want to come down and you want to spend a point, at least one here in the early days into Bone Spear and make your way across to Paranormal Bone Spear. You want, I'd say get to Paranormal Bone Spear before you start ranking this up to that max. But hey, that's what you got to do. Then guys, you need to make your way down to this part of the skill tree here. If that means you need to spend more into bow and spear, that's fine. But I'd probably go on leaving energy or and imperfectly balanced, sorry, as well as huge flesh to make your way down. Don't waste all your points as you get them in these. Just use them to get your way down to this one here. You then guys want to apply corpse explosion. Just one here, that's fine. That's all you need. We don't progress further on here. Also, Blood Mist. This is optional, but I use it because it helps me escape those CCs. But hey, it is optional, like I said. And then again, guys, you need to make your way down to this one. So if you need to spend further on, spend into Grim Harvest. Consume a corpse, generate six essence. This is actually important. So eventually you want to max these out as well as Fueled by Death, where you deal increased damage for well, after you consume a corpse. These are very important as well. So once you're here, guys, you need to be spending... Uh, into amplified damage again you deal 12% this is max you deal 12% increased damage to cursed enemies we will be using um, decrepify but this will be coming from a heart we won't actually be having this equipped to our ability trees or anything like that we just we just got it here so make sure you have this on more damage people more damage again um, if you need to make your way down you need to spend more points use this one right here death to embrace you well close enemies take 6% more damage from you and deal 9% less damage to you very important on necromancer once we're here, guys, you want to spend into Corpse Tendrils as well as going across to Plague Corpse Tendrils because we need that vulnerable people. So yes, again, spend as many as you want here. I max this out because you want that cooldown to be as low as possible. Now, once you're here, guys, you want to come down to Serration as well as Compound Fracture. And my next points will be going into Evulsion. There's not too much ways about that. But these are very, very important to this. I probably should have gone through here before I've run through there. But it doesn't really matter. My next points, I'll get them quick enough with this build anyway. So they'll be definitely going to this one. Once you're down here, guys, you want to be using uh, Bone Storm, uh, Prime, as well as Supreme. Make sure this is great. Your critical strike chance is increased by 20% while this is active. That's amazing. Again, at, well, you want to do this max uh, eventually, standalone. But for now, put one in here just so you can get to Momentum Mori and rank this up as much as you can. 
because we do sacrifice all our corpses, uh, all our minions, so which we will come to in a second. We then go and spend into ossified essence. This is an absolute must, people. No two which ways about that. Okay, so obviously no Paragon board yet because we are not a level 50. Well, in regards to our Book of the Dead, this is fully unlocked around a level 30, I believe. 35 max, I can't remember. But you want to sacrifice your uh, skirmishers for that critical strike chance. Uh, mages, you want to go with Shadow or Cold for increased damage against vulnerable enemies. It's up to you. I go with Shadow for that increased essence in the early days. Once you get that better gear with that essence reduction and this, that and the other, I probably will go down to this one. But hey, for now, do what you got to do. And in regards to our golem, we want to sacrifice the uh, bolt, iron so Because we get a 35 increased critical strike damage to those enemies. Great. So in regards to the armor I have here, like I said, I've been using this gear from probably around the level 20 to 25 and haven't really changed anything including the weapon i know for a fact i can do way more damage but until i need to i won't be wasting my materials so the only gear pieces i've got those aspects on are my primary two-handed weapon this isn't an aspect i've extracted by the way it's a simple codex rewarded from a dungeon and that's what's great about this leveling build it requires no farming of those aspects to make it all work so this codex is rewarded from the guruan slums dungeon this is an absolute must for sure Next up guys we have the amulet, this one vital to this build. I actually had this drop which was lucky but for a while I used the codex which here is rewarded from the corrupted grotto dungeon. And at first ring we have that increased sacrifice bonuses. This codex is rewarded from the ruins of Eridu dungeon. Now on your second ring you can use a codex of critical strikes with bone skills increase your essence regeneration. This is rewarded from the black asylum dungeon. I haven't actually used this at all but we'll start for sure. But other than that on my gear, there's literally nothing else for damage output. But what I would recommend is on your helm and boots, you have some form of survivability codexes here. Other important affixes for gear, but not a must. Movement speed on your boots helps. Any form of essence reduction or maximum essence helps. Ranks into skills we are using helps. Increased bone skill damage is great. Intelligence, dexterity, willpower ain't bad either. But to be honest, within these early stages, nothing affixes wise is an absolute must because this gear you'll surely forget about once that end game arrives. If you can though, I'd recommend a two-handed sword with core damage and vulnerable damage on it. Now in regards to hearts, these make this a leveling build. There's only two really required, you can play around with a third. Now you want the heart which activates the Crepify when enemies are around you. This can go as low as a single enemy trigger, which I haven't seen myself yet, I'm probably too low of a level. But this paired with the amplified damage means you get free damage when surrounded by enemies and it works great. But enemies affected by this also are slowed and deal less damage. More survivability people. You can also, once this buff is activated, run around and curse many, many enemies. Then tendrils them and do even more damage. Take them out. You also want walking near a corpse triggers corpse skills every one second. This is a must. And with this guys, it triggers that corpse skills from left to right on your skill bar. In that order. So make sure tendrils is first and corpse explosion is second. In regards to those corpse skills. What this does is every corpse we create and we reap as well as that huge flesh we create a lot it basically means you never actually have to press that tendrils button in fact the first enemy you hit with reap will also get tendrils spawned beneath them this just starts at devastating damage the corpse explosion is only really here to get your essence back but both tendrils and explosion generate that essence for you and with them doing this every single second without you pressing any buttons you get quite a lot of essence back so you although will sometimes run low on essence, you do get it back within no time at all. And that's basically it guys. That is what I've been leveling through a world tier 2 with my Necromancer on. Had absolutely no problems whatsoever. Still got plenty of points to spend here. But all I will do is just add it into damage output. Max out death reach for sure. Max out that evulsion like I said. Stand alone for that damage reduction too. And probably inspiring leader for the increased attack speed. I may still experiment with the Crepify, see what I can get out of this with that heart. But other than that guys, that's basically it. That's what I've been using. I've been absolutely melting everything. It's got me to end game. Literally guys, I've probably played a day and I'm a level 42 already and I don't sweat this game. It's super, super fast, let me tell you. So yes, those are looking to level a Necromancer to that end game to a level 50. So you can take part in that capstone dungeon. 
try this out and let me know again it's not meant to be a permanent end game build it's just a leveling build which i expect for you to change once you get to the end game but guys there we have it if you enjoyed the video leaving a like it really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one